Hello there, and welcome to Shep in the Metaverse. Today in the Metaverse, we are reviewing the VMA's new category, Best Metaverse Performance, and we're going to be doing our own picks of who is winning top place in this category this year. Let's take a look at the artists that are on deck for this award. We've got Ariana Grande with a Fortnite performance. We've got Blackpink with a PUBG performance. We've got Charlie XCX with a Roblox performance, BTS in Minecraft, Justin Bieber, and 21 Pilots. Here is the ranking system that we will be using today to bucket the quality of these concert metaverse performances. The first one is overall concert experience, things like length of concert. Is it two songs? Is it 10? Is it five minutes? Is it 30 minutes? Generally speaking, what's the quality of experience I'm having as a fan? Do I feel like I can interact with the artist? Do they feel like they can interact with me? Are we both able to have special moments together in this performance environment? Metaverse experience, or Metaverse UX. We're looking at the quality of that experience. We're looking at how finely detailed are things in the environment, in the user interface? Does it help me? Does it make it more difficult for me? Uh, is this experience aligned with user behavior? Do I have to go wildly out of my bounds of what I'm familiar with in terms of technology and user experiences to be a part of this one? If yes, probably gonna get a lower score. If it's familiar and aligned with what I know, higher score. Lastly, producing these experiences is pretty expensive. And to that end, what has the team behind this experience done to take that investment and create some new best practice. Are there things from this particular performance or this campaign that we can call upon in future projects to help cement the success of what we're doing? For creative direction, we're looking for originality, we're looking for novelty, quality of that approach. Does the experience that's been created align with an artist's brand? Is it out of alignment? Is it more in line with a brand that's sponsoring the project? Uh, like a Samsung, for example, and is it able to inspire delight and invoke excitement in the audience that is attending this experience? For 3D direction, we're looking for quality of 3D art. Is it fantastic? Is it okay? Is it blocky and jerky? Uh, especially with motion capture technology, if you've done it poorly, you can get these really weird uncanny valley effects of a 3D model that's sort of jerking all over the place and having some weird glitchy buggy maneuvers that break the real-time feel of the concert for the viewer. Last piece on this is use of space. We're in the metaverse, baby. We can jump off a trampoline mushroom, fly a thousand feet in the sky, catch a surfboard down a tidal wave of colorful paint and, you know, smash a golden star with a hammer. But we can't do that in a physical concert. And I think that's an important piece here. How have the teams used 3D space and the game engines that are powering these to give us something that we can't get at a physical concert? The fifth element is gamification. This one's pretty self-explanatory as well. Is it gamified? What is the level of that? How interactive is it for me as a fan? Is it integrated into the experience? Is it a sidecar or parallel component? Uh, maybe outside of the concert experience, there's additional elements running that are gamified. And is it relevant or distracting to the experience, right? We'd prefer it to be relevant. We don't want it to necessarily be something that's separate and nearby and also distracting from what we're trying to focus on, which is the artist and the performance. Finally, we've got replayability. Do I want to come back? Do I want to see this again? Has it gotten me excited about uh, showing a friend? Is the experience something that I can even visit again, right? An evergreen experience, like in Roblox, I can come back to that world and watch it again. Or is it time bound, like a wave performance or a Fortnite performance where it's like a actual tour. The artist does three shows and then it's done and you can't see it again. And lastly, is it static or is it evolving? when I come back a second time, if that's even possible, has it changed? Has it improved? Have bugs been fixed? Have new quests or new songs been added? Let's go ahead and jump into the first concert experience that we are reviewing here now.
Okay, first on the docket is Ariana Grande's Fortnite experience. I would call this a gamified concert experience. There are parts of it that are not really concert-ish. They're more like a video game where some music's happening in the background. But to a certain extent, that's semantics, and a lot of these are, you know, exciting moments nonetheless. So where is this happening? This is in Fortnite. This is what Fortnite calls the Rift Tour, something that other artists like Marshmello and Travis Scott have also participated in. This was a time-bound experience, August 6th to August 8th of last year, 2021. And this is happening inside of Fortnite, right? Which is owned by Epic Games, company that uh, maintains and, and builds Unreal Engine. And so this is a really powerful game engine uh, powering this platform. And because it's happening in Fortnite, it's a social experience. You can go into this with up to 50 different users, whether that's you and one friend or you and 49 people you don't know. Uh, and you know that makes it a nice shared experience. Every time you go through here, at the very least, some element of the concert is going to be different based on how people around you are interacting with the environment. So this particular show starts in classic Fortnite form. There's a portal, sort of pulls you in, you fly through a tunnel, some past Rift Tour experiences float by you, and then boom, you land on this surfable water slide uh, as your Fortnite avatar. You're surfing, you can hit those blue orbs in there, get a little speed boost, and they're really just setting the tone for the art direction here. Crazy Colorful Vibes is exactly how I would describe this. You're just flowing down a cotton candy, you know, snowboard half pipe, basically, as these crazy marshmallow guys dance in the sky. And eventually, uh, you pop out in a very, very colorful sort of like bubble castle world. And you can see here in the middle, we've got Ariana uh, kind of like flying around right there. Everybody's in a bubble sort of chasing after her. And it's pretty neat component of the experience. You can steer your person a little bit, uh, and at this point Ariana is singing, you know, doing her first performance. There's some motion capture of her where, you know, you can tell she's dancing and actually like performing this material. And also some nice little Easter eggs here of her, you know, interacting with the crowd. This is more of a canned interaction. Uh, I screenshotted this because it's one of the few times in the actual experience where she engages with the audience members, but it's not one-to-one, -one, right? It's just sort of like a out-of-the-box uh, emoji that is happening, not because she's looking at a particular fan and doing something, it's just, you know, canned. In this experience, there were several very high-fidelity environments. The first one with kind of the bubbles and the castles in the sky. This one's more of a Greek-Roman pillar architecture sort of thing. And then lastly, there's a deep space sort of nebula experience. And as we're traveling through all of these, it's reinforcing the art and the creative direction, but also you're getting to see more and more of the actual uh, skins and weapons that are part of this activation. And this one, Ariana is wearing her Star Goddess skin or something like that. Users are able to purchase those, take them out into whatever realms of Fortnite that they're playing in, in addition to this concert experience. Uh, you saw a hammer in the last picture. That's a weapon that you can buy and take with you as well. So merch and kind of the long tail benefit of this concert is something that's very important to keep in mind uh, from a commercial perspective for the artist and also for the fans, right? I've attended this in a real world show. I'd like to buy a shirt if I really enjoyed the show or if it's an awesome tour. Uh, you'll see right here, I'm actually wearing an Anderson Pack shirt. Let me see if I can get it all the way up there. This is a Fortnite shirt, right? This is a Fortnite tour shirt that I bought from an Anderson Pack show I went to. And ideally I could do that in the real world with a virtual show. Um, in this case, not how it played out. They went fully virtual, but that's okay. Fans want to be able to take an element of the experience with them as they progress into the future, right? It's a, a great nostalgia trigger. Ultimately, for Fortnite shows, especially in these Rift Tour examples, they're very grand scale, extremely high fidelity thanks to the power of the Unreal Engine, the Fortnite uh, game building platform. It's very cinematic, high level uh, visual fidelity, and that's great for a music experience, right? You can be really engaged 
with the visuals. This is not something that you can typically get at a physical concert, which is a really, you know, great thing to consider as a fan when I'm trying to decide, do I want to go and be a part of this? Overall, the strategy involved uh, gear, you know, merch, outfits, emotes, weapons that fans are able to purchase and take forth with them into the future, uh, pre and post show quests to unlock gear. There were some different things before and some different things after that you could unlock, which is a really smart way to capitalize on the hype of this kind of experience. In addition to the Fortnite performance, what do you do if you don't have Fortnite? Well, luckily, this is also streamed live on YouTube and Twitch. You can see for the opening night that it was almost 1.7 million viewers watching outside of Fortnite, uh, which is a pretty cool volume of viewers. That's more people than you could get at an actual concert. So great numbers and signals there. And looking at the actual statistics, Fortnite side of peak viewers in the experience, that opening night, 640,000 peak viewers. And across the five shows that they did, 374,000 average viewers. All told, the cumulative hours watched for this performance over five shows, it's almost 600,000 hours watched of Ariana experience in Fortnite, which is really, really crazy to think about. And I did also find some statistics that the streaming numbers in Spotify also directly jumped uh, a large amount for tracks that were featured in this performance. Uh, I believe one track had a 120% increase uh, in the week following this performance, presumably as a direct result of the fact that, you know, two and a half million people, three million people uh, went through this and experienced this new kind of concert experience. Overall, this one definitely scores high marks. High level for the concert experience. It was enjoyable. Would definitely go back and do it again uh, if it was available. It just made sense and it was fun for me as a fan to participate in. Metaverse UX, great. Uh, except for the fact that if you're not used to Fortnite, you know, then it's a new thing. But there are hundreds of millions of people playing Fortnite. So this was a great way to break the mold and do something in the metaverse that you can't do at a physical show. And I applaud that. Creative direction, extremely strong. High level of visual fidelity. Same thing with the 3D direction. Great motion cap, extremely high level of 3D and technical work. The gamification was fun. At the beginning, there were the surfing kind of slide piece. You could also do this segment where you were jumping around and flying through the air and it was very rhythmic to the music. That one did not get a five here because it was not technically part of Ariana's performance moments. It was sort of the two to three songs leading up to the actual Ariana performance. But despite that, you can still jump around, run around, fly around, hop off of things in the concert experience. So that one got a four out of five. And for replayability, it gets a two just because there's not an opportunity to go back and revisit it uh, and do it again. And it doesn't change much in terms of the performance when I do it again. It's still the same canned Ariana performance that I would expect. And it's not going to change dramatically outside of what I as a user am doing in that experience or the other users around me are doing. Boom. So first one down, Ariana out of the way. Up next, let's take a look at Blackpink's PUBG Mobile performance. Blackpink in PUBG Mobile, a gamified concert experience. One interesting thing to note with this one is that out of all of the things in this category, this one is specifically for mobile, right? This is happening as a, you know, kind of handheld device experience and there's a lot of limitations that come with that in terms of like what you can do with the hardware and the dynamics of the 3D environment. So it's not quite apples to apples, but we'll see. Overall, for a concert experience to be hitting at its highest level, I think it does need to be a social experience and the UI of mobile games a lot of times limits you from having a very seamless 
immersive social experience. Those things, honestly, are best served for a desktop, high visual fidelity, lots of different flexibility levels in terms of microphones and headphones and, you know, moving around while you're doing it and not needing uh, to be on a 5G network connection to do this. You can be on Wi-Fi at your house. But nonetheless, this is still pretty impressive for the consideration uh, that it is a mobile experience. The show starts with the band dropping in from an airplane, kind of parachuting in on a magic set of holographic wings, and they land on stage and get into what sort of feels like a pretty standard traditional concert. This is like fans over here, artist is over here, can't really cross the barrier between fan area and artist area and throughout the concert they do change environments a couple times right we've got this one as well and additionally there is some gamification surfing <laughs> this is something that uh, you'll see a number of times throughout this review and obviously we've got giant band members in the background of course this is becoming a very classic metaverse trope surfing through the ether while gigantic band members do their dance moves and sing for you. They did use this to debut a new song, I believe, called Ready for Love. And it becomes more of a traditional performance again, right? Immediately after the surfing component, we're back to just watching the band perform. And then they wrap up with, you know, a nice strong frame, something that's great to screenshot and share. Uh, on social as well and I think you know this is a this was a good concert there's definitely some limitations with the mobile UI you can certainly have a, a huge volume of people watching this um, it's definitely easier to pull out your phone and just hop into a mobile game that you play pretty frequently and press the watch concert button and it fires up so good food for thought on that case and they actually used the same 3D environments and 3D avatars and motion capture process to produce a fully virtual music video for Ready For Love, which is now on YouTube. Overall, across the two weekends on PUBG Mobile, the concert saw 15.7 million viewers overall. That is definitely larger than what we've seen with some of the other concerts, partially because there's a lot of people just playing around on their phone and if it's easy to jump into a concert experience like this when you're playing PUBG, you go for it. The Ready For Love music video on YouTube has actually been viewed almost 150 million times, which is pretty crazy. It might even be more than that since I checked this stat. And it's a great proof in point that investing in doing an immersive 3D experience can also net you other assets that are great for marketing and brand building purposes as an artist. Overall, the strategy is one that you'll see play out many times throughout this review. Uh, gear, so outfits, emotes, weapons that can be taken into other parts of the game. The game environment itself, while this promotion was running, had themed Blackpink assets in the world. And for the artists, they were able to take their investment into working with the platform and turn it into music videos that have since gone on to net them way, way more views than the actual concert itself earned for them. So here we have a couple pieces of gear, some weapons, a parachute. Here we've got some emotes, different dance moves. And the outfits that can be purchased by PUBG players, each one of the Blackpink members had an outfit that went into the store to be purchased by players. Overall, this one gets a somewhat middle of the road review for me, 2.6 out of 5. Concert experience, a 3. Eh, you know, I'm not big on necessarily mobile music concert experiences. There were a lot of ways that this could have been better as a fan. It felt like a traditional concert experience for the most part, just virtually happening in my phone. Uh, that's also why the Metaverse Experience score is a 3. I don't feel like they really pushed the envelope on this in the broader genre. It was certainly cool that they were able to do this mobile first with a pretty big audience in the PUBG player set. Creative Direction, eh, you know, straight up the middle I would say. Pretty much what I would expect from a Metaverse sort of experience. 
crystal gemstones, space themes, holographic stuff. It was very, I don't want to say contrived, but typical might be uh, a good word to use for that. The 3D direction, same vein. Um, pretty good quality, but nothing flashy. The motion capture was good, so they got that going for them. And obviously it was good enough to port into a music video component as well. So, you know, dynamic assets. The gamification, I give it a two. The actual one gamified component of the experience was meh, it was okay. For replayability, I would also give it a two, simply because we can't go back and do it again. And there really wasn't much in the way of fan or concert goer experience that I could change if I wanted to watch it again. So for that reason, overall score of 2.6. Okay, Blackpink down. Let's go check out the BTS performance next. We'll call this more of a music video. This was not quite a fully immersive or interactive performance. Uh, what was happening here is the band was performing on a stage in Minecraft, but it was as part of a broader 24-hour YouTube stream, you know, kind of celebrating the end of the year and going through a bunch of different trends. And so, you know, one hallmark of Minecraft is that it's kind of lo-fi, right? It's these voxel 3D pixel avatars, and it's not very visually striking, especially when compared to a Fortnite concert where Unreal Engine 5 can just absolutely send the cinematic quality of the experience to the moon and then you look at this and it's cute right but it's not really that uh, staggering to to witness and for this particular performance it was only two songs right less than five minutes total I think they did butter classic and a second song and that was that my summation here is this was cute but lackluster this probably is not going to come out on top as the winner, although it was a neat concept. There was a lot to be desired from this one, and to be honest, I think they probably could have found a better performer to put in this category, knowing some of the other metaverse performances that have happened in the last year. Basically, anything that you're doing in Minecraft is limited by the Minecraft aesthetic, Roblox does a fantastic job of sort of breaking that box by allowing a lot more visual fidelity in the platform, uh, even though it sort of is like this metaverse version of Legos. There's a lot you can do with the Roblox Studio uh, 3D platform, but Minecraft, very stripped down. Uh, one thing that I would say is kind of an interesting consideration in Minecraft is because it's so stripped down, you can probably have a lot of users in one concurrent experience in a Minecraft concert, which just makes this extra weird because there was no like public attendance uh, option for this, probably because it was a YouTube live stream, and so they just had their section of influencers who, you know, 50 people were able to go into a private server and be there for the filming and it wasn't really for the audience in Minecraft, it was for the audience on YouTube. Overall, their strategy was pretty simple. They did the performance, they posted some stuff on their social media platforms, obviously the performance is on YouTube, they had some Minecraft influencers attend, and the stats are kinda hard to say. The YouTube video has about five million views, a little over five million now, but there really isn't much data to dig into here to validate that this approach was a fantastic metaverse performance. I think BTS fans will like anything that BTS does, but this one definitely was not the heavy hitter in the bunch. Overall, this one is definitely the bottom of the barrel in this set of six performances, getting a 1.5 out of five, the concert experience was lackluster, the metaverse user experience was basically non-existence, uh, the creative direction was fun for Minecraft, uh, and I think that's an important metric and measuring stick to keep in mind. Minecraft is not Fortnite, and you can't really go apples to apples on that kind of comparison. So I would say, for Minecraft, the creative direction was good, but 
it was limited by Minecraft, and that's why it can't be a 5 here. Same with the 3D direction. They did some neat stuff with Minecraft, but again, it's Minecraft. So it's not really a stellar visual experience uh, for me. I would not go and consume this concert if it was happening live. I watched it back via the YouTube stream of the performance, and that was all that was available to anyone who was watching the experience. So gamification, one, I would give it a zero if I could. Same thing for replayability, because there's no gamification and there's no replayability in terms of why would I watch it a second time. It was only two songs, like five minutes or less in terms of overall experience. So this one does not score high marks in terms of uh, metaverse performance category. I do not think this is a good blueprint to follow for future artists to, if they're considering doing this, don't do it this way. Um, and yeah, push the envelope. This was not pushing the envelope very much, so not very high marks. BTS down. Let's jump into the Charlie XCX experience. Charlie XCX Roblox, a gamified concert experience and evergreen virtual world. That's one of the nice things you get about going into Roblox. For this one, this is actually very, very heavily sponsored by Samsung. And I think that's part of the reason why they really pulled out all the stops on this one. This is a gargantuan undertaking of an initial Roblox build. There's motion capture for the artist. There's, you know, fixing that, turning it into a concert experience. And you'll see there's a lot of gamification and replay value in this particular Roblox world. So uh, it's a little bit of a small font there. Not sure you can see it, but going into the metaverse vmas here this thing has over 8 million visits and it was just updated two days ago uh, so they clearly have gone through they've committed themselves to bug fixing which is something you definitely have to do with roblox worlds there's a lot of weird glitchy things that can happen um, as the platform updates and just people are all over the place doing all kinds of things and they find a bug and now it needs to be fixed but Interestingly enough, this is Samsung Superstar Galaxy, right? This is not the Charlie XCX Roblox world. This is a Samsung Roblox world, wherein Charlie XCX is a flagship performer. There were a lot of exciting and cool features in here. Uh, here's one of me taking a selfie in front of the Samsung Arena. You'll see there is a absolute ton of games in here to play, right? All of those things, Asteroid Smash, Labyrinth, Rising Lava, every one of those is its own little kind of unique game uh, with game mechanics. I can use those games to earn stars and spend my stars on merch and emojis. Uh, you'll kind of see down here in the bottom right of that window, there's a little star and a hoverboard. I can ride around on a hoverboard. There's some really neat interactive pieces in this. Obviously all of this is happening outside of the concert experience. Uh, but I thought it was really, really cool that I get to text Charlie XCX in this experience. There's kind of a heads up uh, text display. A lot of this is sponsored by Samsung, right? So they're trying to get people to uh, buy their new Samsung flippy Galaxy phone. So of course, this is a really thoughtful way to bring that brand activation in here. You bring your phone with you everywhere you go in the space. And Charlie tells you all about the cool stuff that you can do. Charlie's actually your avatar guide in this experience. It's definitely a social experience. The gamification feels really thoughtful. Uh, by playing a game and performing well, you know, you can get your name up on the leaderboard in here. Uh, my name is up there, having scored zero points on one of these games that I went through. This is the same setup for each game in the space. So obviously there's a lot of time that you could spend in here uh, playing the game. One piece that's really important to note, much like in the Fortnite experience for Ariana Grande, there were weeks of buildup and support for this, not just in platform, but with influencers outside of this platform who have millions and millions of subscribers for their, you know, daily Roblox world exploration content. Um, so week six is the week that was leading up to the launch of this concert experience. New avatar merch, right? You could get a pet. You could get a jetpack. Uh, there was a new zone. 
that was opened up. The actual arena. So they had all these games and stuff available in the world for you to come in and play and poke around. And on the day of the first concert, the arena actually opens up. And one thing that is uh, pretty neat with this is you can actually buy stage props to kind of tinker with the lighting and the performance experience that you're able to generate uniquely by being in this experience yourself. Additionally, there was some serious interactivity in this. Uh, true special fan moments. More special for the fan than special for the artist. Certain people uh, were selected uh, in this sort of flagship Roblox live stream of the performance with Creekcraft, who is a uh, Roblox influencer. They were selected as dancers in the experience. So <laughs> in addition to a gigantic Charlie XCX dancing around on the stage, like you'll see here, uh, over in the background is actually, in each one of these songs, a new person was the gigantic dancing Roblox avatar, you know, doing some cool dance moves, backup dancing for Charlie XCX. Limitations here are really coming from the Roblox studio, Roblox game engine. There's only so much you can do in the platform. It's really robust. It's strong on gamification and interactivity, but it is not Unreal Engine. It is Roblox. It is a platform that does what it does, and it doesn't do what Unreal does, which is produce extremely cinematic, high technicality level deliverables. It's a fantastic performance experience. The motion capture uh, that they did for Charlie is really solid, but it still does not have the same level of visual awe that you might get with uh, a more advanced platform building this kind of experience. There were definitely some glitches uh, in the experience when I played it and <laughs> on the flagship stream, right as the concert starts, all the players are stuck floating in midair for about uh, 30 seconds and then, you know, they reset and the experience actually begins. But that's something that you get in Roblox because it is like an open platform. Anybody can build a world and publish it. It's not like Fortnite, which is definitely a triple A, like top of the line game where there's a million engineers constantly fixing every bug. There's one team that built this Roblox experience. And that team is the team responsible for fixing the bugs and finding the glitches. And so you do have this experience with Roblox where you actually run into glitches. Um, not regularly, but you know more so than you might playing a AAA game. All told, I think the games were actually pretty fun. Although they're not technically part of the concert experience, all of them were themed around Charlie's music. So consider it what you will. Is it part of the metaverse concert experience? Is it separate? Is it parallel? Hmm. That's sort of up to the viewer to decide. I thought it was a great component for the pre-show experience, right? You get excited when you're going to a show. You don't just show up and immediately get there and the artist is on stage, right? There's this element of building hype and anticipation. I think this is a creative way to do that. Additionally, it was pretty easy to explore the entire world. They had this floating monorail around the outside of the Samsung Galaxy Arena, so you could easily transport yourself between games. You didn't have to walk across the whole thing. It just made it easy to get a little sampler of the entire experience they created. And obviously because this is Samsung branded and not Charlie branded, Despite that, it felt like a pretty authentic brand partnership of something Roblox users would enjoy, Charlie fans would enjoy, and Samsung was just sort of there <laughs> as a brand partner for the experience. Overall, the strategy involved gear, once again, merch, emotes, and outfits. I think a distinguishing piece of Roblox experiences is the evergreen nature of them, right? It's a world that still exists that players can go back to with their friends now and explore. I think for the Charlie world, the concert component is not quite as accessible. Uh, I'm not sure if you can, I don't think you can go in and watch a Charlie concert, probably because there's some music licensing questions around that portion, but you can play in the entire Samsung Gallery uh, Galaxy Arena. 
And since the launch of the world, they've done a lot of game updates, they've fixed bugs, they've put new gear in, uh, there's an opportunity to have new songs, new portions of performance in there. And obviously the brand partner here of Samsung is seeing a lot of success and traction with this experience. So who knows, maybe this is something that ultimately gets reskinned in the future, not as a Charlie experience, maybe it's a Halsey or a Dua Lipa experience. We'll see. Overall, this experience scores a 3.8 out of 5 was strong on the concert experience. As a fan, it was enjoyable. You know, I could explore the environment, tinker a little bit. There were some fun Easter eggs to find, and it was a decent length performance, right? There were multiple songs. Each one had its own performance venue uh, and different aesthetics to it, so that was nice. In terms of the metaverse experience, eh, it was kind of what I'd expect. Instead of having a uh, black pink style fans are over here, artist is over here, experience. This is one where the artist was sort of in an open environment. Fans are able to run around and explore and, and tinker, which is something that's nice. You can't do that in a real concert experience. Creative direction for this, I would give it a four, just because each performance had its own section, its own aesthetic. However, uh, along with 3D direction also scoring a four, it's just limited by what Roblox is able to do visually and aesthetically. The motion capture was pretty solid for uh, Charlie in this one. For Roblox, it was an extremely high level of visual fidelity. Gamification in the performance, this one is kind of a squirrely metric for me because there wasn't so much that you could do as a participant in the experience, but there was so much supporting material in terms of gamification outside of the Samsung Roblox arena. This one scores a four, I think, that's an interesting gray area here. Are we scoring the overall virtual world environment or are we scoring the concert performance? Tough to say, but for replayability, I would also give it a four uh, for the same reason. I, as a fan, can go in there, explore different things per song. Um, I can also play different games with my friends before and we can have a lot of fun challenging each other seeing who can get a high score on the leaderboard before the show and after the show uh, and i think a strong piece just to wrap up here for creative direction and metaverse ux kind of tying those together was the very very vast set of emojis merch uh gear things that you could buy to take the elements of this experience with you into other parts of Roblox. So this one was a definite two thumbs up from me. Um, I think if the concert itself was a little bit more robust and dynamic, this score would be higher. But again, we're balancing between what's the actual concert performance versus what's outside or parallel to it. And uh, that's why we've got a 3.8 out of five for this performance here. With Charlie wrapped, let's jump into Justin Bieber's Wave concert. This one's a good one. So I'm particularly fond of Wave concert experiences. They're a great balance of what a metaverse, immersive virtual concert experience can be. It's in many ways the best of an actual concert experience plus up with what we can now do in 3D you know, immersive virtual environments. So the tagline for this, very accurate and interactive virtual concert experience. Let's explore some of the reasons why that is the case. So inside of a wave, you know, this immersive concert experience, there's multiple 3D scenes and environments. Uh, there's a lot of fan interactions. So this is, like I said, not happening in a Fortnite or a Roblox. This is a custom platform, Unity slash Unreal, something like that and fans are able to participate in the experience via uh, a web browser. They're watching, they're observing, they're interacting, they're typing comments. The platform has some creative ways to surface those fan engagements in real time in the concert experience. So you'll see in this scene, we've got comments from fans. You know, in this scene, Justin has just appeared, so everybody's very excited. In between every few tracks, Right, as we imagine watching a physical concert performance, an artist doesn't always just go song, 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 concerts done. They have some moments of pausing, talking to the fans that are a part of the experience, 
for Wave. This element is called Waver Cam, where people who are watching the concert can grant access to their camera. And in these special moments of kind of artist fan interaction, the fan camera feeds are pulled into this virtual environment. In this case, Justin standing on the stage, he can actually also see a lot of the fans uh, from wherever he's performing with the motion capture suit on. Uh, he actually calls out someone who's wearing like an old school Justin Bieber hoodie. And, you know, you can see that person kind of light up on their face from that interaction. And it's happening in real time. Uh, you know, Justin in this picture has said, you know, put your hands up, put a, put a thumbs up, put your hearts up, something like that. And you can see the people in the background actually doing that. So I think that's a really magic piece that is part of this concert experience, part of the wave experience that you're not able to get with a lot of other concert experiences too. As I mentioned earlier, comments from the fans are woven into the experience in a lot of different ways, whether it's little talk bubbles or sort of magic dust that's appearing. And fans are able to kind of claim a background dancer. Uh, I guess if they're lucky, their name appears over one of the sort of holographic particle dancers that is supporting Justin in this performance. They're not actually doing anything, I don't think. Being able to see your name as part of the performance is a neat experience. In this one as well, fans are able to sort of take over some flowers in this like flower patch around Justin and grow flowers, like kind of shoot up some energy out of the ground. This definitely makes each one of these performances feel distinctive, where some element of the lighting or environmental aspects is controlled by fans who are excited about the artist's performance. You'll also see here, over on the left, there's a little power-up meter. Throughout the Wave concert, fans are powering up the artist. Presumably they're just smashing a button <laughs> on the browser side to, you know, give some energy to the artist. and you'll see as the power up meter climbs, more and more of those particles that are sort of flying at Justin are going into him. He's absorbing them eventually when it tops out, there's a big burst of light and it goes into the next song. Lastly, there was a pretty strong finish on this one, bringing in the waver cam aspect and just giving people a great moment at the end of this where Justin is sort of like waving goodbye and everybody's also excited and you can see all of that in their faces. I quite enjoyed this concert experience. I think Wave has a fantastic structure to the concept that they've built here. Throughout all the other Wave concerts I've seen as well, including The Weeknd's TikTok performance, it's a really fantastic solution, especially with the TikTok one, being able to see that they could pull TikTok comments into the experience in real time. That was awesome. Wave's got a really flexible platform and I'm excited to see more of what they do. Overall, this one gets a 4.1 out of five. Great score. As a fan, as an audience member, the concert was fantastic. I felt engaged. There were chances for me to engage with the performer, for the performer to engage with me. And through the, you know, metaverse experience that Wave is creating, I think it's a, a really unique way to engage fans virtually and digitally in a way that you can't at an actual concert. It's taking that experience and it's adding to it, which I think is a really strong metric of success here. The creative direction was great, along with the 3D direction, uh, strong motion capture, a lot of different environments that fans were able to be a part of. And I think one piece that gets a five on the creative direction here is the 3D environments are actually responsive in some ways to what the fans are doing throughout the performance, right? You're powering up the artist, you are uh, shooting lights out of the ground or out of flowers and it's, it's getting absorbed into things, right? There's a nice intermingling of the audience interactivity and the artist's performance. The gamification aspects, while it's not technically a game platform, being able to comment and have those things appear in the environment, being able to become a backup dancer, being able to power up the artist all of those things sort of contribute to a really nice level of interactivity. The waiver cam, that's something that none of these other experiences had. The ability to, for a fan to see themselves in the performance and for the artist to also see them and respond to what fans are doing in real time, fantastic. In terms of replayability, I think this one is getting a three instead of a two. Yeah, this one is time bound, right? So once it happens, it happens. You can't go back and do it, but there is a lovely aspect to the YouTube upload that they've done of this where 
It's got chapter markers. They've actually taken the performance and they've made it easy for me to revisit in YouTube. I can go right to the exact moment that I thought was cool. I can, you know, click into a timestamp and that's, it's very easy to do that. So for that reason, this one got a three instead of a two on replayability. Justin Bieber down, last one. Let's check out the 21 Pilots concert experience in Roblox. It's an evergreen virtual world. You can go back and revisit this. And this one is actually done in partnership with Roblox. The publisher is Roblox Events Arena. So once again, it's not 21 Pilots publishing this world. It is Roblox, but it was a great interactive show. So far to date, there have been 13 million visits to this experience. And despite being published by Roblox Arena Events, it is a 21 Pilots concert experience. So it's directly branded to 21 Pilots in contrast to the Charlie XCX performance, which is a Samsung branded performance featuring Charlie. In addition to the actual concert experience, they were following a similar playbook of emojis, uh, merch that you can do quests and win through obstacle courses and things like that. So definitely seems like that's a very acceptable Roblox playbook to follow. Let's take a look at the actual performance itself. Through this one, there was definitely good mocap as well. They've got that process locked down. One nice piece was the interactivity. So fans who were in the audience in the opening track, at least, were able to kind of throw colored balls as part of the performance. For that reason, you know, depending on who you attend with, whether it's a friend or a bunch of people you don't know, each show is going to have that distinct human element to it. And interestingly, I think this is a fantastic framework uh, for this kind of concert experience. Fans were able to pick the run of show. They could pick which songs they wanted to see in what order, and it was sort of democratic in the sense that you just go and stand on the platform for the one you want to vote for. There were five total songs, four following that first one. Each one had its own distinct aesthetic. The different venues were a good blend of kind of abstract and real ones. The first one was Street Corner. There was another one that was like a garage performance. This one that you're seeing here is like you're floating in space and you're inside of the head of the 21 Pilots artists, two guys, and the performance is happening on top of their brains, which was pretty cool. And in the final performance of the you know official concert experience that's published to YouTube, uh, you'll also see that there is more surfing or rail running in this, and so uh, we're sort of in this mystical space where the artists are gigantic and the fans are tiny little characters and they're running around the outside of the map very similar to the mechanic in the charlie experience where you can kind of take a monorail track around the outside of the experience to play different games there's no games in this one it's full concert experience which is an interesting distinction to make between these two Roblox experiences, Charlie and 21 Pilots. I think there was a great use of space in this one. They did a great job of not just having one set format of environment. Uh, in the Charlie performance, you're sort of in the same scale of environment for each one. Charlie is big, everybody's kind of small, the space is, you know, a big circular area you can run around and explore in. In this, the performance venue, I guess the, the stage to fan relationship changes pretty dynamically. So in this one, the viewers are tiny little characters running around on top of the piano uh, that the artist is playing on. So thumbs up for that. This is definitely a good blueprint in terms of creative ways to leverage the space. Right, five songs, each one feels pretty distinctive with its own level of interactivity, a little bit of gamification, and a great dynamic level of spatial awareness throughout each of those performances. As mentioned earlier, strategy kind of followed the Roblox playbook, got some pre-show and post-show quests, special prizes you can compete for, merch you can unlock to wear on your avatar, and there was also a photo booth that you could do as a user where you can kind of put a custom background behind your character, screenshot it on your computer, and then the obvious interesting element of the set list picker. Choose your own adventure, which is something I wish was more of a thing for real shows. Being able to see what's coming next and pick the songs that you're most interested in with the audiences is kind of a neat 
performance aspect. Overall, this one scored pretty close to the Charlie experience, but it got the edge, getting a 4 out of 5 for a couple different reasons. Concert experience gets a 5. As a fan, I really felt like I was watching a 21 Pilots show, not a Samsung branded Charlie performance in Roblox. The metaverse experience, it was good. I think the team did a great job of thinking laterally thinking creatively with what can we do in this environment that we can't do in a physical concert. Creative direction was pretty good. Each song had its own performance environment. The 3D direction was okay. Obviously that's a limit of Roblox. They had good motion capture, but I think the level uh, compared to Charlie's experience, the level that the band was able to hit with this was not quite as high. Now, part of the distinction is this one was released maybe eight months, 10 months, 12 months before the Charlie experience. So it might be a case where creators or the platform have actually expanded what's possible to be built with Roblox Studio. Or it could also be that Samsung's budget to take it to the max level of visual fidelity just made the difference. Um, this was a 21 Pilots branded experience, not a Samsung branded experience. And I think that's important for myself as a fan, thinking about what I'm looking for here out of the experience, I'm going into this for 21 Pilots, and they really delivered on this. And because of that, replayability is a five. A five, baby. We can go into that Roblox world, we can actually, uh, you know, pick which song we want to see in the order that we want to see it, which is a cool element that none of the other performances in this category offered. And again, as I said, really strong performance. I did not expect to rank this higher than the Charlie show, but we're ranking the performance, right? The metaverse performance. And despite Charlie's performance also being bolstered by a massive Samsung Galaxy world, that's not the performance. That is the venue, per se. And I think 21 Pilots did a really fantastic job with this experience, making something that's fun for fans, it feels authentic to the band, and it's worth coming back to. The Roblox world is still up, uh, feel free to go check it out. And there you have it. We have reviewed all six elements of the Metaverse performance category for the VMAs. And overall, let's take a look at the stats. As you can see here, Ariana Grande at the top with 4.3, Justin Bieber close second with 4.16, 21 Pilots in third with 4, Charlie XCX with 3.8, Blackpink with 2.6, and BTS with a 1.5. I think overall there's a lot of subjectivity in this. Uh, I think on a different day, I might have put Justin Bieber's ahead of Ariana's. I might have put Charlie's ahead of 21 Pilots. There's still a lot of soft metrics in this. And at the end of the day, every one of these is a great success. They've pushed the envelope. They're helping redefine what is a metaverse performance in the modern era? What does a fully virtual performance look like? Uh, and the fans are really the ones deciding who is the winner here. And from what I could tell, reviewing for this project, connecting dots on social posts and marketing plans and PR releases, every one of these was a massive success in its own right. Millions and millions of people viewing and interacting with these performances in real time as they were happening. And in many cases, you know, the artist also was able to make a nice, healthy paycheck doing these performances, which is something that's that's quite interesting. I think it was rumored Ariana got $20 million to do her Fortnite performance, which is, uh, <laughs> that is quite a paycheck for a set of five shows over three days. And again, we're, we're not able to have full transparency into the revenue that the artists are making from... Uh, virtual merch sales, right? Emotes, outfits, that sort of thing. But I imagine that's also a component of their payday. All told, if you're going to watch one of these, I would definitely say uh, watch the Ariana Grande one and the Justin Bieber one. They are high level of visual fidelity. They're showing off what's possible with the technology, with the social aspect of these. And I, for one, am very excited to see where this continues to go. I hope you enjoyed this Shep in the Metaverse review. This was a lengthy one, but
but there was a lot of material to cover, and rather than just give you a overall ranking, I kind of wanted to explain the thought process behind why we're ranking things the way we are. What truly makes a great metaverse performance? Because over the next few years, this is going to be exploding in popularity. Every major artist is going to be having their own kind of immersive metaverse performance. And hopefully today's review puts a little bit of a framework out there that people can use as a yardstick, as a measuring tool for what goes into a great metaverse performance. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys later. And go enjoy some metaverse performances. <laughs> Peace out.